Hello and welcome to another episode of Code Time. My name is Pete Medina and in this episode we'll be creating a container class to contain the width of our website. So if I jump back over to my browser, you'll see this is the stuff that we did in the last episode and notice that it takes up the full width of the page. Well, you know what, let's, uh, let's make it a lot smaller. This way it's easier to look at. It looks a little bit neater. I'm going to jump back into my style sheet here and uh, there's a few things I wanna do. The first one is let's get rid of this text green class. We don't need that anymore. Uh, I'll save that and I'll go over to my HTML file here and instead of text green, I'm just going to write text blue and I'm going to remove it from all the paragraphs. The only thing I want with that blue color are my headings. All right, so let's delete that, delete that, and refresh. All right, so only the headings have this blue color now. A little bit neater to look at. Let's jump back in here, and now let's create a comment. So comments in CSS start with a forward slash star. Now I'm going to name this section here utility classes, because if you remember, a utility class is a single purpose class. It does one thing. So this would be where I would add my text utilities. You know, I could add text red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple in here eventually. All right, the next thing I'm going to do is create a layouts section. So I'll do layouts. And these comments are just so it's easier for me to look at. And I'm going to create a new class called container. All right, and I'll introduce you to a new, uh, a new property now, and that's called width. So I'll do width. 800 px for pixels so that's a pixel unit all right now if we jump back over to our index.html we need a a tag to apply that to so let's create one now if you remember from the the restaurant video the really long one where we built that restaurant website i showed you tags like header and section and main but for now let's just create a div all right a div is a division it has no real semantic value, but they're pretty common. They're useful as hooks for our CSS. All right, but keep in mind as we do this that we could just as easily apply this container class to a header or a main or a footer or whatever else we want to apply it to. But for now, we're just going to apply it to a div. So let's tab out this entire section here and create a new line here and we'll do div class equals container. All right, and then right below that, we'll close it. All right, so if we jump over here and refresh, Notice now that everything nested inside that container class now has a width of 800 pixels. Now, I'm in the Chrome browser, but this would work in Firefox too. If you right click anywhere in here and click inspect, a window will pop up um, showing you some of your HTML. And as you hover over the different sections, it'll show you some of the, the rules. So if I hover over container, Notice that it, it shows a container has a width of 800 and then a height of 405, right? And everything blue is within that width. Now, if I hover over this H1, I'll see the same thing. It has a width of 800. Um, blue is representing the H1 itself. And then these yellow, this, uh, these yellow colors here are representing the margin. And that's a new property I'll introduce to you next. All right, so on the right-hand side here, it says styles and also says computed. If I click that and scroll down a little bit, it's, gonna, it's going to show me all of the rules being applied to it. So this H1 has a color value, that's what we set, and then it has some stuff that the browser set itself. These are all the different CSS properties um, that are applied to it. So if we go over container, we'll see that it, it's, uh, it's displayed as block, which we'll talk about later. That's a browser default. But right here it says width is 800 pixels. That's what I set and apply it to this class. All right, so let's close this off and jump back to our CSS file. And we have width 800. Now, what if I wanted the website to display um, on a smaller screen? What if the screen was less than 800? Well. Right now, if I have the width set to 800, it's not going to get any smaller as the screen shrinks. So if I jump back over here and I inspect that element again, I'll have these, uh, these little icons here in Chrome. It says toggle device toolbar. Now, if I click that, um, it's going to let me make this window smaller. So if I shrink that down, see how I have this horizontal scrolling action going on here? Let's, uh, let's make it a little bit bigger, right? That's because the width of that container class is 800 pixels. So there's really no room for it to scale. But 
instead of with 800, I could do max with 800. That's telling the browser that it can be any size up to 800. That means if it has to shrink to less than 800 pixels wide, it'll do it. But it'll never grow wider than 800 pixels. So whenever you're working on something that might be displayed across multiple devices, and especially with small screens, you would use this max width property. All right, and now there's uh, one more property I wanna show you. It's going to be the margin property. And margins are the invisible spaces around an object that determine how much uh, room they have around them. So if you notice, these headings have this blank space below them. Same with these paragraphs, that is a margin and it's being set by default on the browser's style sheet, but we can override it with our own style sheet. So let's jump over here. And uh, to start, let's change the margins on our heading. So here's our utility classes. Let's make a utility class of no margin. So that'll be right here. We'll do dot no margin and we'll do margin bottom zero. So this is going to be applied to our headings here to get rid of this space. And we can tell we have a margin because if we right click it and hit inspect, and let's close this device scaling, scroll up a little bit. See how it has that yellow around it. That is a margin being applied to this H2. That's the browser default. If we go back in here, um, and go into our HTML and find all of our H2 classes. Right now they have text blue, but they can share multiple classes. So we'll do our no margin text blue. See how even though I'm adding a new class, I only have one class attribute. But both classes in here now are separated by a space. So you can add as many classes as you need to to an HTML element. Right now I have no margin and text blue. So if I save that, go over here and refresh, we've gotten rid of uh, the margins on these H tags. If we look at it, we'll see we have no bottom margin, but there is a top margin still being applied to it. Let's turn that off as well. We'll go back in here. We have margin bottom zero. Let's do margin top zero as well. All right, let's refresh it. All right, so now if we look at this, our H2, our H1, they have no margin. See how we don't have that yellow outline. But our paragraphs all have a margin on the top and bottom of them. That's another browser default. Let's, uh, let's go through there. And uh, right now we're doing this with classes. So we can apply this no margin class to anything. But let's, uh, let's set it a new, a new uh, style to all of our paragraph tags. So I'm going to make a new section here make a new comment and I'll call it um, defaults. All right. And uh, I'll do P for paragraph and I'm going to do margin top zero. So now what I'm saying is every paragraph that exists in my document from here on out will have no top margin. So margin top is zero. If we go here and refresh it, there we go. Our headlines have no margins below them and our paragraphs have no margins above them. So now there's this, this empty space here. But I'm leaving the margin bottom alone. And how does this relate to this container we created? Well, it's not centered right now. Instead, it's, uh, it's sort of flush left. But what if we want to center it? We can do that with margins. So let's jump back over here. And we have our container with its max width of 800. Let's make a new value in here. We'll call it margin, or I'm sorry, new property. We'll do margin. And uh, we will actually, we'll do margin left. So margin left is auto. And then margin right is also auto. So things like margins and paddings, which we'll get to in a later video, um, borders and so on, they have top, right, bottom, and left versions of them. So in this case, margin left and right both have auto. Let's set uh, margin top to zero and margin bottom to zero. So we don't want any margins on the top and bottom, So, but left and right is auto. Now what auto does is it tells the browser to add as much margin as necessary. Think of it like telling it stretch your arms out 
on both directions, left and right, and uh, take up as much space as is available. And so when we look here and refresh it, we'll see now that there's an equal amount of margin to the left and right, thanks to that margin auto value, filling in all the available space. And that has the effect of centering this uh, 800 pixel wide container. And it has no margins on the top and bottom. I don't know why my dictionary keeps opening. All right, so there we go. Margin left and right is auto, top and bottom is zero. Let's jump back into Chrome now and look at some ways we can do this with shorthand. So we don't need to write all four values here. We don't need margin top, left, right, and bottom. Instead, we can do margin zero auto. All right, so let's delete all of this now. And I'll explain what this means in a second. So if I save this and go back to my browser and refresh, nothing happens. Right, and that's because zero auto is the same thing as what we had. So let me bring that back and we'll go over it. So this is margin shorthand. And what it's doing is when we do zero auto, we're saying top and bottom values are zero and left and right are automatic. Think of it like this. All right, I'm going to create another comment here and I'm going to do margin top slash bottom left slash right. That's what this is the equivalent of. So this first value, it understands to be the top and bottom margin. And the second one, it understands to be left and right. Now, what if I wanted to add a 24 pixel margin to the bottom of it? Well, I could do 24 PX. So again, this is shorthand and it'll look at these three values here. It'll say, okay, this one's the top. Number two, if I only have three is left and right. And then number three is the bottom. Now, what if I wanted to do another uh, value on the left or right? I could do auto as well. So this is the same thing as what we had before. It reads shorthand clockwise. So when we do margin zero auto, 24 pixels auto, that's the same thing as saying margin top is zero, margin right, because it's clockwise. So margin right is auto, margin bottom is 24 pixels, and margin left is also auto. All right, but if these two values are the same, we can delete the last one and it'll automatically apply this to both left and right. Now, if top and bottom are the same, in this case zero, then we can get rid of that, that one right there. And it'll understand this as being margin top and bottom are zero and left and right are auto. So let's save that, go back here and refresh it. And uh, that, that does it for this video. Um, you've created a container class with a maximum width of 800, meaning it'll scale down if necessary. You've adjusted some of the default margins for your headings and paragraphs, and you created a margin auto uh, shorthand to help center your container class. So that does it for now. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.